action. Let me start. Those words are spinning me out. Anyway, did you hear about the dyslexic guy and the stutterer who want to do a podcast together? No, whatever. Well, they're about to. So, so when you hear the word dyslexia, what do you think of? People not being able to read and write properly? Maybe spelling words back to front? Well, hopefully you don't think people who can't spell are stupid. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm Danny DeHeck, a.k.a. the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger, and, and I, I'm dyslexic. And I'm Rob, no name, and I stutter. Well, but I'm not going to stutter tonight. You wouldn't believe it. He's the world's worst stutterer. I often ask, 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 ask Rob if he's, a, if he's got a bad stutterer. That did not make sense. No, it didn't. No, we've got to be normal businessmen it so people can't it tell. It didn't, but true story... Um, I, I, I got told by somebody who knew that I stuttered and they said, oh, I knew someone who had a terrible stutter. I said, have you ever met anyone who had a good stutter? Mm, she was taken aback. That's good. I brought it forward again. But I have some questions for you, Daniel. I'm in there. Because you are a self-proclaimed dyslexic. Self-proclaimed dyslexic. I never looked at it that way, but okay. That, is that good or bad? I don't know. I don't. E I, yeah. I don't, I don't even even know if you're self-proclaimed. Yeah. But let's get into the question. How long have you known you were dyslexic? Ooh. Uh, oh, that's a good question. I thank know. you. Thank you for asking me that question. I've got a few others here as well. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, but I, I grew up thinking I was stupid going through the school system. However, when I got older, I had great joy in realising that there was a, a lot of people who had dyslexia that were also very clever, such as John Lennon, Nigel Kennedy, Walt Disney, Tommy Hilfiger, Einstein, Richard Branson, just to name a few. So I'm not here today to convince you I'm not stupid. I don't, I don't know. I think... Oh, well, actually, when I was about... Um, well, I'm trying to keep this brief, but when I was... First went to school, they said I was advanced, and they put me a year ahead. Okay. And I reckon that, that stuffed me up a little bit when it come to learning. But um, when I got to the, about age 13 and 14, I got put in the highest class in school, mm -hmm. well, one of the highest classes, and then they grade you out of the class, and I was the lowest in the class, and the next year I got put in the worst class of the school because they thought we were all naughty kids. So did you realise that you were different? Did you realise that, you know, compared to the other children in the, in, in the class, that reading and writing was an issue for you? Um, no, not really. No, I just knew I couldn't read and write, couldn't pick it up. Weren't interested in it when I think back. Didn't really care. I just, and you didn't think you were different to anybody else? Man, I've always been different in my life, you know what I'm saying? This is true. <laughs> um... Yeah, I did leave school at 14, and the headmaster said to me, um, are you sure you want to leave at 14? I was, yes, because my birthday's in January and school was adjourned, so legally I could actually leave at 15, and I uh, never looked back, really. Hated it. Hated school. So do I take this that you went throughout school without being diagnosed as a dyslexic person? No, they did put me into a special class. Because I couldn't read. I never could read. Oh, okay. But it was just a reading class because then he had problems with reading. Right. And, and they hadn't labelled you in any way just, you know, that you had issues reading. No, not just, yeah, they never, and they got, never got labelled as a dyslexic. And I don't know, I'm 53, so if you go back, I don't know, where are we going back? We're going back 40 years. They didn't really know what that was. Yeah, so that would be 1973. No, no, no. Keep no. Going. 80, 80, 80, 83, yeah, 1983. Yeah. See, I'm good with numbers. That's, that's <laughs> fascinating. So have you actually been diagnosed yep. as a dyslexic person? At the age of 23, I thought I'd get a test. So at the age of 23, I decided to go get some professional help. I went along to Spelt Canterbury, and they did a whole lot of tests over a couple of hours, and they come back to me and they said, Hey, Danny you have a reading age of a 9.3 year old. I thought that was quite good at the time. And I said, well, what do you do about this? And they said, what you could do, you could hire a personal teacher and maybe learn how to read and write. So I did that for a year, two times a week. I would go along to my reading and writing teacher 
And over a 12 month period with my hand on my heart, I can actually say I learned nothing. It was a total waste of time. And I went and uh, got tested. Um, I can't remember the test. It's a bit of a story. I don't want to bore people because we don't want boring podcast. But I went to Spelt Canterbury, Canterbury, and they gave me a test to do. And they, after they did the test, they printed out the piece of paper and they folded it in half and put a piece of paper, a sticky bit of note on it. Yeah. And told me that I have dyslexia. So then I said, what do I do about that? And they said, oh, you could go get a reading teacher. So I did. I hired a reading teacher uh, two times a week for 12 months. And then, ironically, I found that piece of paper, I think, 20 years ago. And I never opened it. I, I never even read my diagnosis. So when you have dyslexia, what is it like if you have a look at a script or anything that you want to read? I just literally go blank. Uh, I, I, I try to, I, I, I say to people, I've never read a book in my life. And they, ha, 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 ha. And I go, no, I haven't. And I go, oh, you can read. And I can. So I could read a book. I remember I did read a book called The Rats. Got halfway through it. Yep. And it was a really good book because it had rats in it. And I connected with the rats. <laughs> and they got free in the subway. And then it was a terrible experience for the rats and the people. Anyway, won't go there. But but I just read the words, didn't really get the meaning of it. So I'd pick up the book and carry on reading, read the page that I've just read 20 minutes beforehand, get halfway down it, and then realise I've read that page before. So if I didn't have a bookmark, I wouldn't know where I were in the book. But then none of the information in the book was actually being absorbed. Okay, so if you're looking at, let's say, a page on a book... Yep. You can see the words? I the, uh, Dyspraxia is where the words sort of jump out at you. Yeah. I don't think I have that because I haven't been diagnosed with that because that's yeah. a new thing you can have. Mm -hmm. However, I do feel like I struggle to look at the words. And they gave me a ruler and I used to read one word at a time. But it was just, it's just like... Yeah, across. It's just like shuffling cards. I don't know how to play cards. So you <laughs> can see the words. You don't have dyspraxia. But... You're, you're reading the words, but they just don't stick. Uh, reading the words, I don't absorb the information the words are telling me. Interesting. Because yep. like, I, I don't actually know what dyslexia is. Yeah. So is reading the only problem that you have? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got an example. I've got an example. I'm going to leave you again. Rob, you keep talking to everyone. I'm going to see if I can find something. Okay, so I, I don't actually know what dyslexia is. I, I don't have dyslexia. I have a stutter, as we alluded to before, but I'm using a little bit of speaking technique here, so I'm keeping quite fluent. So Danny's just gone and got a, a, a page yep. of words. Okay, so this... Uh, you can't see it, but just so you get the idea, uh, I had to file some documents in the courts, and my I told my barrister, uh, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And he gave me a list of five things that I must do in a really clear, and most people could read that, Yep. and they could see, I got to the point where I'm at the clerk uh, in the high court, and I'm asking her to read this page for me. And she was really nice and read it to me. And she read them all off. And I go, no, just one at a time. Because um, print the affidavits and the entire DS, DSD1 PDF in colour. So my brain, I have to go away and do that one task. Yeah. And then I have to find the next task and you feel like you're a robot. You know, they told me I have a reading level of a 9.3 year old. I think they have a better comprehension of the English language and things like that. I just don't get this. So this became a battle. When I got down, down here, I got lost. And I had to ring up my lawyer and said, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Don't quite understand that one. And it was just really weird. that. And he gave me a list. And then when I got to the end and I did all the tasks, I actually said, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because I've done the tasks. I had to do the tasks. It's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay. Because it, it is quite difficult for a person who doesn't have dyslexia to get 
head around that because like for example I like when I was studying particularly in my last year I, I was reading a lot of material mm. none of it stuck so mm. you're reading words you know like you're reading sentences and paragraphs and textbooks mm. and about 20 minutes later you're realizing I've read like 10 pages but I have no idea what I've just read well that's it yeah well that yeah, yeah. So I reckon the uni- my I'm... my theory on why people go to university is they go to university to learn how to learn. Mm. I don't believe they go there to come out because you're learning from somebody else who's already done it. I like to I like to discover how to learn. But I'm the guy that would sit there and reinvent the wheel. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. So mm. besides reading a book or anything like that, is there anything else that a dyslexic person has problems with? Oh, there's just there is quite a few things. I mean, I don't know. I don't like being victim mentality, and I tell people I'm dyslexic. Like I, I sell TV remotes, mm-hmm. and people ring me up and they tell me the serial number, and they go yeah. D S C, and my brain has to go D. I have to visualize it, and then I write it down. They have gone D S C, and then I have to go that, and then they they don't have a hyphen. Well, it does have a hyphen. If they don't tell me the hyphen, uh, I go searching on the internet. Try to f- I'm on the phone searching as fast as I can for what. The- I type in DSC hyphen, and then YouTube will pop up with the ones that. And I'm hoping like hell they're going to go zero 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 six three, and I'll set, and then it'll be seven three because my brain doesn't hear the whole words in the sequence. So they've read it off, and then they go. Oh, the the stupid. Well, not this. I didn't mean stupid, but they'll go whiskey, foxtrot, alpha, and I'll go. I'm not in the army. A, <laughs> B, <laughs> bravo, and I go. That that does not help. That actually makes it worse. Okay, so in a normal day, as an adult with dyslexia, what Ooh. common problems will you have? I just wanted to give people a little bit more insight into what dyslexia actually is. So I'm 50 at the moment, and would you believe I don't actually know the alphabet? I don't know the uh, difference between a verb and a noun, and I don't even know the months of the year. So to give you an example of how that actually, what that means, if you said to me you were going away on a holiday on, in June, I wouldn't know how far away that was. I wouldn't be able to gauge that distance. Uh, so if you told me that June is the sixth month of the year, then I'd be able to know that we're currently in the third month and there's a distance of three months and I'd break that down. So everything, I have to translate it to understand. So it's always a battle. But fortunately enough, I do know the days of the week. And you might think that's good. But today, I do not know how to spell Wednesday or Saturday uh, with confidence. And I use a keyboard, I can do it, but when it comes to writing it down with pen and paper, I, you wouldn't be able to read my writing. Oh, what common problems will you have during the day? Um, well, everything. I mean, I, I'm a YouTuber. Uh, you just watch me do the notes. Like, the AP, um, chat API is brilliant. Yep. So I will publish... To, oh, look, if I do words on my videos and then publish a video, somebody will write a cheeky comment and go, oh, you spelt the red wrong. Like, I know I spelt it wrong, mm. and I can't fix it. And it's published. So now I don't use words on my... I don't use pop-up words with wording when I'm publishing a video because I know I'm probably prone to a problem. And people, why don't you add a caption? Or why don't you scoot somebody's name in there? Yeah. Um, you know, it's like your name, Rob, I, have to, I can see your name before I can spell your name. That's right. No, I had to see, I, I would go to spell your name and then I would look at what it looks like and go, yep, that's his name. If, if, for example, somebody was spelling the word naughty and they spelt it out in phonetics. And when they spelt it out to me, they told me an eight word version of it. And I think it's seven. And when I wrote it down, they were serious. I would have Six, me on. Still, is it? Well, there yeah, you go. So. Whatever it is. But when I wrote it down, I said to them, this isn't right. Uh, it doesn't look right. Ah, okay. Yeah, sometimes I can look at a word and not be able to pronounce it, but I can tell you it's spelt wrong or right, but not be able to look away and tell you what the letters are. So everything I'm so all day long I'm trying to take photographs of things in my head and remember what it looks like. 
And I can, I'm good with faces. So I normally, if I meet somebody else, I can say, I've seen your face before and I'll try to connect. And I think it's the same with words. So every, every, the whole day is words. Like filing these court documents the day before last was a day of terror, <laughs> you know, and sequences. Um, comprehension. You know, people tell you the whole, you know, it's like I'll tell you the A to Z of things to do. And I'm going, can we just do A and let me process do that? Um, you know. Mm. Do you find that you try to avoid multitasking and, and just do one task at a time in most things? I'm very good at multitasking. It wasn't until 1993 when an ex-employer gave me a parting gift and he gave me a digital diary. And with this digital diary, I finally found a way to remember and retain information I had learned. And I could put everyone's phone numbers and all their details in this device. So as technology has evolved, I really have embraced technology. And this four minute speech that I've got here, when I, I wrote this yesterday, I used voice recognition software and spoke the words to the computer. And this speech, I've actually given this quite a few times and I can actually save it forever. It's better than the human memory, to be honest. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, because the computer, I mean, uh, my whole life changed with computer technology majorly. You know, like when Google came out, Google's now my spelling di dictionary. I mean, if you go through my YouTube channel, look at the comments and you see the wee emojis, you would think, oh, Danny's really good. So I go, I have um, shortcut keys set up on my keyboard. I type in the word chat, C, and it comes up and says, check my spelling and grammar and add emojis. I use that probably 20, 30 times a day. If I want to say something, I write down what I say, like in bullet points now, which is a lot easier, chuck it into open, um, open AI. Chat GPT. Yep, tell it to write this with, uh, check the spelling and grammar, add emojis, and add a little bit of humour. And out comes something. I listen to it, with, uh, I select the text, I listen to it, and I might have to tweak it, but most of the time I go, that's perfect, and I paste that in there, and I'm like, oh, and people, I'm now getting interaction with people, because um, people say, oh, it's not a scam. So I, I'll go to chat, GPI, whatever it's called, <laughs> and go um, explain what a Ponzi scheme is. Boom. And then I paste it underneath what I want to say. I say what I want to say, then I paste it underneath, and I get that message out there, and I can finally um, communicate with people. Otherwise, it's pigeon language. Oh, Danny de Heck. Oh, he's Dutch. I live in New Zealand. Oh, he's, he can't speak English probably. He's probably Dutch and he's still having problems with the language. <laughs> so I've watched you interact with a computer and a couple of things that I notice is that you seem to use the microphone on the computer as in you talk to the computer and it arrives up with your words. Yes. So... Um, Speech to text, I guess yes. you would call that. Yeah, you use that a lot. Copy and pasting. Live on that. I have RSI because of cut and paste. Yeah. And I don't understand people who don't use keyboard shortcuts. And um, my, my partner um, is a one hand person on the keyboard. Mm. And I'm always on a case and I go, use the left hand. <laughs> and she, you know, like she'll go over the other side of the keyboard and I'm going, I'm on the keyboard like this all the time. My hands stay above and I, I use, oh, don't want to push the button, but I use um, one of those, and a touchpad instead of a mouse. He took his back to the shop. Then you know, talking yes, about I that. did. He thinks so right. if you were in a workplace, mm -hmm. and obviously yeah. in your adult working career, you've been in a workplace, if you told a person that you were dyslexic, what would you want that uh, workmate or manager or whoever, what would you, what accommodations would you want them to make for you? None. None? They don't really hassle. Right. And is that standard with all people who yeah. have dyslexia or just you? So dyslexia is often talked about as a gift. And I think the real difference I've found is people with dyslexia have to find new inventive ways to do things. When I was 17, I got my first job. I knocked on uh, Michael Wakefield Plastics. Uh, Michael Wakefield, and my job was being in the yard on a forklift, unloading trucks with six metre long pipes. Mm -hmm. Quite good for a 17 year old guy. And then they come out, and I used to work really hard, and then the boss came out one day and he said, hey Danny, we're really impressed with your work efforts. We want to um, put you in the office. 
I went, oh my God. And Mr. Driver come in. And all I had to do is find him in the system. I could go out the back in the storeroom and get all the pipes of all the numbers, come back to the counter, and then ask Mr. Driver how to spell his name so I could find him in the system. There you go, Mr. Driver, plumber style, you know. And I couldn't spell his name. Couldn't find him in the system. And he goes, oh, oh. you know, he's getting grumpy because he and he's telling me three times and I'm... And I actually quit that job before I got fired because I learned that if you got fired, you'd get a bad CV and no one would hire you again. And I remember the boss coming out going, you know, we really want you to stay here. And I go, no, it's not the job for me, you know. So then I thought I'm doomed to be a tradesman, doomed to be a forklift driver, you know. Let's break this down. The guy comes in, Mr. Driver, yep, and he says his name. So it, I guess I'm struggling because I, I'm thinking, okay, if a person said driver, yeah, I can see the word, write the word. Do you want me to spell it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, 53 years of age. I, 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 what I see in my head is a D-R. Yep. And then I, and then V-E-R, but yep. there might be an I in it. Right. And because New Zealand language is not the favourite sometimes, so Mr. Driver, Peter Driver, I still remember him because, you know, um, but, you know, my boss's name was Mr. Lukaski, Lukaski, something way out in another country. And it was about that long, his name. And I thought, I'll never be able to spell that. Your, your name, I won't say your last name, but you have two O's in it. Mm. Um, I get the, I, I put two L's in it. And then I put two O's in it. Then I remove one of the L's and put two O's, and then I move them one side to the other. So if I, I literally can't read my own handwriting. But your name, I, I on the keyboard, I just type it in quite naturally. But if I'm having a bad day or I'm tired, then I'm sitting there uh, trying to think of the pattern. You know, everything's a pattern. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Because my superpower, if you like, that I've had... It, it, Ever since school, are you the crypto Ponzi scheme avenger? Is is not not <laughs> no. that no. is my ability to spell. Yeah. So even if I don't actually know what the word means or whatever, as long mm. as I've seen it at some time, I can spell it. You've you've done some of my writing for me in the past. I've sent you a description, and you've fired it back, and you've rewrote something for me the way it sounds professional and all that. I mean, I've replaced you. I don't need your friend anymore. Sorry, no, Rob. No. However, they, they, they are big. I'm always begging people. I used to drive my partner crazy. Can you just come in here, help me finish this off? And then she would say, oh, you need a comma here. Because I don't know where to put commas and full mm -hmm. stops. I don't know where to, um, where to paragraph something. I like, I'm very uniform. So if I'm writing, a, you know, writing something, I, I want it correct. I'm a perfectionist. And I don't know where to put a full stop, start a new paragraph. But I'm learning lots of that. But this is one thing with chat. GPI, whatever the open AI thing it's called, I just chuck it in there and tell it to check the grammar and spelling. It shif shifts the paragraphs around where they should be, and it does it for me. And then I listen to it all and go, oh, it's, oh this is great. So I'm picking up that basically the letters in a word are jumbled or they're not all there, or or if you're reading... Not, not all there. Yep. They are all there, yeah. but you can a struggle to read and comprehend and like hold it in. When, when I was little, uh, I used to write R's backwards and P's backwards and D's around the wrong way. Okay. And I remember I had this friend of mine, her daughter used to have a, a sandboard. I think my daughter used to do that when she was yeah. young. Yeah. And I thought I, I, I used to trace. And I, I'm a very, I'm a, I've got an eye for detail, real eye. So I used to get magazines like, the, um, what are they called? the old comic books and I used to put tracing paper over the top of it and I could get a sharp pencil and draw them perfectly and okay, I could take yeah. it off and on and I'd get it exact and that's kind of how I used to love drawing but when it come to um, the words I don't, oh that's right but I think I got out of that um, um, what I'm trying to say I, I trained myself out of it so a lot of young people who might be labelled as dyslexia, with dyslexia at a young age, I think some of them can get educated enough to learn how to learn and get themselves out of it. I missed that training. So I think I could have been a lot better because I went through school like a zombie. Is that good or bad? That killed people, didn't they? Probably not flash. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so I just went through school waiting for lunch, waiting to go home. 
and I didn't didn't really exhort. I did like woodwork. I got an A in sewing. I was the only boy in the class. Only A I ever got at school. And the next uh, closest thing I ever got was a B plus in maths. Uh, everything else was C's and F's. Uh, so I, I was a painter and a decorator. And I was literally the most qualified, uh, practical... Pra See, this is where I struggled. Like, what if I said I, I was the most qualified painter and decorator in the class with my practical skills, but when it came to the theory, I was the worst. So I'd go into a cubicle where there were wallpapering and the guy would be struggling. I would do all his wallpapering in three cubicles, literally, get it all done, and the teacher would come in and go, oh, you've done a really good job, Smith, but Danny had done it all. And um, But when it came to the theory, I remember doing the, f the first year's test, I really tried and failed. The second year test, I tried again, I failed. The third year test, and the third year, I went there, and um, they sa I said, this is the last thing. Once you finish this, you're on your own, and you're a tradesman. Away you go. And I just got there and went, nil, 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 nil. I had the whole test done in five minutes. Walked out to the counter, said, thank you very much, and out I went. Because I'm, I'm sick of trying. I'm not, I haven't given up. Well, I have given up. I don't need it. I don't want to learn how to read and write anymore. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. Because people are always trying to teach me. I don't want to be taught. So the purpose of this little wee video was actually to challenge you as the educated person to stop using your educated habits and find new ways to do things. And if you need a hand, you can ask Danny to hit because I'm quite clever at that stuff. Personal life. How has or has dyslexia affected your personal life? Um, it's got me in trouble a few times. Um, even... Um, yeah, it has actually got me in trouble a few times because if you ever, um, I don't know how I can not explain something that sounds terrible, but I, um, I remember um, I was in a religion and I was kicked out of it and I, no one could speak to me because I was shunned from the religion. And I, I remember um, seeing a good dear friend of mine and I, I left her a note on the table and um, they didn't know, they couldn't read my writing and they actually called the police on me. Because it was it meant something I didn't mean, and I'm sitting here going, it's not me. And then when they found out it was me, they go, oh, Danny wrote it, you know. Um, the police dragged me into the courts with it. Interesting. But my lawyer said, oh no, you said that. And I said, well, I didn't mean it like that. It was around, you know. Um, I'll tell you what it is, because it's, it's actually a terrible thing, and I remember it. And the girl who I wrote it to is one of my best friends. I, I used to go out with her, and she's now a lawyer, which is ironic. But um, she was about to marry this young person that was around about 18 years of age. And in the religion, marrying people at that age is normal. But when I realised who she was marrying, I, um, I wrote a note to her because she was a dear friend of mine. She was the sister of my girlfriend. And I said, if you marry such and such, uh, I'll kill you. You know, and it looked like a death threat. <laughs> so they took it along to the police. And they, yeah. What did you intend it to say? Uh, well, I did mean it right, but if I was saying that, if you married this guy, I'll kill you, you know, because it's it was too young to get married. She was a lovely girl, and and I I was a bit I was five years older than her, and it was just a bad match. She was a rebel of a guy, and I, it didn't mean it in tongue and cheek. It wasn't a death threat. Right. Yeah, it got thrown out. The judge, because I turned up in a nice suit, and the judge said to me, he said, um, he said to the police, you've just wasted a whole lot of court's time. Does this guy look like a freaking killer? Uh, and threw it out of the court. Uh, which is quite funny, but it was embarrassing at the time. And also saying to my lawyer that I didn't mean it with intent to kill, <laughs> it was awful. And it really was embarrassing. And it's all, um, you know, it's, you know, something that happens in your life. But I mean, it has got me in the ship quite a few times. <laughs> and that's probably, well, that is the most extreme case. But there's no let up with the legal system for once you've done something. So when you write something down, mm. you're buggered. You, mm. you know, even this case I've got at the moment, I'm saying to, um, you know, that I might have got a couple of things wrong, but there's no, there's no, there's no way of, uh, what I'm trying to say is once you've written something down, you can't go back and say, I was disabled with reading and writing with dyslexia because the court system goes, no, you're a dumbass, you wrote that. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So with dyslexia, you may have ended up in some, Awkward or interesting, embarrassing. Like when I went to put them in my old jewellery, I went into the uh, <laughs> the prawn, the pea. Porn shop? Yeah, and I went to the wrong one because it's porn. Well, no, that, that's a word. How do you say prawn? Porn. Well, porn is P A W N. Yeah. If we're talking about a porn shop. Yeah. 
prawn is P R prawn A W. So I I've never pronounced so prawn. Yeah. So I watch my favorite program is Gold and Silver Prawn. Porn. That doesn't work for me. See, I would keep pronounce. I always call every time I talk about my favorite YouTube channel, it's Gold and Silver Prawn. So what I'm picking up. Is that I like both, by the you're way. You kind of <laughs> you. Do, <laughs> we'll cut that out. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get my head around I, how, I how how this works. I don't understand that you don't understand. That's quite funny. Yeah, I, thought, I know. Yeah, I yeah. know. Uh, so I, I'm I'm picking up that really with words when it comes to words, yeah. you're you struggle into a. Oh. Articulate this. Yeah. You can make a mistake and you don't care. Yeah. You can read, but you don't take in. Yeah. You can hear, but then you can't accurately picture the word. Yeah. Or even you can write down. It's comprehension. But y although you've written down what you wanted to write down, it's like you don't associate the weight to the meaning or it's like mm. a dyslexia person is quite liberal with words, meanings and stuff like that. See, I just switched off with that. You didn't scrub it very well. <laughs> well, it's very hard. But you probably it's have. very hard for uh, me what, to get what, my head around. What, what's the point, really? Let's think of it like that. What's the point of, of uh, asking me about my dyslexia? Is it so I can express to other people, uh, not to have more empathy, but more understanding about how to communicate with somebody who's dyslexic? My, my lawyer, that, that what he did there is a godsend. Even though I found it really hard following that list, that is what I want sometimes. Now, if I had that on a computer, like I have all the iPads and devices, I would have selected each one of that and listened to it, and then I would have listened to that and gone and done that job. You know, and he, when I look back to what I actually had to do, the only thing he didn't get right is the double-sided printing. <laughs> mm. You know, but that wasn't, you know, he can do that in his courts, but not here in Christchurch. So, yeah. So, yeah. if a person were to... Because I am still trying to get my head around this. If a person were to write you a list, would you give the words more meaning than if you were to write yourself a list? Um, right. Would I be more descriptive in the way I explain myself? Um, I'm, I love Apple products, and I like the fact that Think Different is their slogan. So now what I've learned over the years is if I want to explain something, I'm like you saw me write a playlist. Yep. And you said, why don't you call it dit, 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 dit? And I said, no, I need to describe dit, 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 dit in one word. And it was troubleshooting. Shooting. Yeah. When I saw that word troubleshooting, it wasn't hyphenated. It wasn't separate. And I don't know why it's okay to have troubleshooting as one word. Should it be two words? So now I'm, I, I'll spend... 15 minutes setting it all up, doing all the branding for it, might even do a graphic. And then somebody goes, oh, when you've used the word like that, it should be hyphenated or it should be two separate words. Timestamp. Is that one yeah. word or two words? I think it's one. Yeah, the fact that you just I had said, to think about that. No, but the think thing creates doubt. And now I'm a perfectionist. I want it perfect. Where do I get the uh, official? So then I get onto Google. And I'll say, um, um, a, a, show me a playlist with the word, uh, what was the word? We've gotten already. Troubleshoot. Troubleshoot. And then see who else have used it. And if 70% of people have used it this way and 30% have used it that way, um, then I'll use the 70%, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, wow, yeah. this, it's like, I, I've heard the phrase dyslexia a lot, and, and I'm still... Yeah. I'm still working here to get my head around this. I'm going to give you a couple of other examples before you ask the next question. When I used to be, uh, I used to be very good at SEO. And when I had New Zealand... Search engine optimization. Very good. When I used to own a company with a 15,000 page network of websites that was all about travel and tourism and all things New Zealand, I had, um, 
I used to make spelling mistakes accidentally. Now, I'll give you an example of this. I, uh, there was 27 bungee places in New Zealand. And you spell bungee with, uh, with an I, a Y, and two E's. Right? Do you? You can do. Right now, when I was marketing, oh, yeah, yeah. when I was marketing those bungee jumping locations to people around the world, I would use all three spellings of that word in my content, because when I met people from overseas, most people would spell it with two e's. But AJ Hackett is it Hackett? AJ, yep. He would spell it with a y. Yep. So when people would read my my words, they say, "Oh, you're not consistent," and I go, "But when you search for bungee, people around the world are searching for different phrases." And I'm getting the traffic. I'm dominating because 30% of the world is searching for bungee with an I. 40% are searching it with a blah and the rest are doing whatever. And then I found that most of my content was spelt incorrectly. Like accommodation. How many uh, How many M's? Ooh, two. Ooh, not sure. Great. Yeah. Um... Yep. So uh, transport. So if I was doing some marketing for a rental car company, I would think how many different ways could you say the word transportation, automobile hire, car hire, rental car, um, bus, anything associated with travel, I would write that into um, articles. And then I would wrap them around a website that would be keyword friendly. And people would say, how come, because I had 45 different rental car companies, you know, like the Pacific Horizon, Pegasus Rental Cars, You Save Rentals, um, Tui Camper Vans, Freedom Camper Vans, uh, there, there was all, the, at the time, there was all the uh, Ace Rentals, A to B Rental Cars, and I had all these big name brands using me to market themselves, but their websites had spelling mistakes all through them. Now what they do is they fix those spelling mistakes. So if you spell accommodation wrong, mm. it will be fixed. So there's no advantage. Spell check. Yeah, well, it just corrects it. It knows that people spell it two different ways, so it doesn't make any, there's no, but I used to get, I, I reckon I used to get 10% more traffic to my websites because of the spelling mistakes. Which gave me the competitive advantage. Interesting. And it also gave me the criticism from other people saying I didn't know how to spell. And I go, well, I don't care. How, how did you feel about the criticism? Oh, well, you're thick skin, but my, my, there was always a method to my madness. And right. then I'd go away and fix it in the darkness of night while the customer wasn't looking. <laughs> but that's okay if it meant something to the customer. So what has dyslexia done for your self-perception or your self-esteem? Uh, self-esteem. Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? Like, what's self-esteem? So I don't know the meaning of the word. How you feel about yourself? Um, now, like, do you feel worthy? Do you feel broken? Do you feel... I feel powerful. Seriously? Do you? Yeah. I think it's, a, I think it's a, a, an exciting thing. Because like, everything that comes my way, nothing's normal. I challenge everything. I look at it completely different. And I think about everything I hear, especially stuff I don't understand. And I love to learn. You know, when I discovered audio books, Anthony Kedos from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, his life autobiography. Now, I couldn't say what I just said, but when I read his book, I loved it so much, I keep thinking about it, thinking about it, and I've memorised those words. Best book I've ever read. Interesting. So yep. I noticed... Listen to. You were, you were saying that you have purposefully misspelt words on websites. No, no, no. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, I found it a bad Sometimes, yes. yeah, yeah. And I know that watching your videos, quite often you will mispronounce words. Yeah. But you don't seem to attach too much concern to it. I can't, don't have a choice. And I just did a wee video of me running into the courthouse the other day. Yep. And I recorded it on my phone and I do one, I'm getting better at doing clips. So I get, I do one takes. Yep. And, and three of those takes, I, I got my wording wrong. Um, and I remember one of them, I, I couldn't say pla platum, 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 there we go again. And I go, whatever it calls, scumbag, loser, dumbhead, idiot, mongrel. <laughs> well, I just come up with it and it adds to it, you know. And people listen to it. And if you know anything about speaking, um, if you engage in your audience. Now, if everything that came out of my mouth, they could have assumed what I was going to say, I'd become boring. Even I don't know what's going to come out here sometimes. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Let's assume that there's a parent of a dyslexic child out there. Yep. What advice would you give them? I would love to spend time with them. 
I, you know, I have all the time in the world to help other people. I would, um, I got the best advice ever, and it's this guy that used to own 0800 Get Junk in America. And he did this TED Talk. If Cameron, his name is, can't remember his last name, have messaged him and we communicate. He, um, he had dyslexic traits. He was always entrepreneurial. He would go down one end of the beach and buy the comics off the poor kids and then go down the other end of the beach and sell these comics to the rich kids. Um, oh, maybe that was Rich Dad Poor Dad. don't think it was. But, uh, um, but he, he's, um, what did he say? He said something really interesting that was really good. Um, oh, I've forgotten. What was the question? <laughs> if if you were giving advice oh. to the parent of a person who's that's got right, he said his parents used to get him lessons at things he sucked at. Did I pronounce that right? Sucked at. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing. Why did my mum get me lessons at reading and writing? Why didn't she see that I was good at cycling? Because everything I've done in business, you should get lessons at things you're good at because that's what you excel at. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's like yeah. kids who play Space Invader games. It aggravates me. And then all of a sudden, here they are winning forty or $50,000 in a Space Invader competition. Oh, you can make a living out of that. People will find a way to make money. Like photography is a great thing. I'm, I love street photography. My partner's a professional photographer. I was working for her doing videography the other day for the first time. I'm not trained. You know, I listen to, I know all about cameras a wee bit now. I'm dangerous. And I love street photography. Why not? And now, how does a photographer make money? I don't know. But um, eventually you find ways to make money out of something you're passionate about. Mm. But imagine if they spend all the time teaching me how to read. I'm sick of learning how to read. So what I'm picking up is that your your advice would be to focus on strengths and not weaknesses. Definitely. And and not weaknesses. Yeah. It actually reminds me of a story. I'll, I'll just actually okay. throw this in, is that when I was young, I was right into athletics. Mm -hmm. And back in the 80s, one of the big names in athletics was Sebastian Coe. Mm. And a lot of the training back then was you build your endurance in the off-season, and then you build your strength, and then you turn into speed, and then you combine it all, and you race. And it was basically, you know, it wouldn't really matter if endurance or speed was your strength or your weakness. That's how mm. you train. But Sebastian Coe's dad said, well, Sebastian Coe's a fast runner. And so his, his strength was his speed. And so the whole focus was well, let's work on your speed and let's make your strength stronger. And he wasn't fast enough to be a sprinter, mm -hmm. but by focusing on the strengths, his, his speed, his, his speed was able to last longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he broke the world record for the 800 metres. So was, at that time, that was, that was completely novel thinking. But mm -hmm. this thinking of concentrating on your strengths is mm -hmm. a new thing. So... What you're basically saying is that if your child has has a weakness, mm. well, let that go. Let's have a look at what they can do well. Before the parents take their children out of school, I think some kids can um, get out of it. I think they can be taught out of it. Okay. And I think that's you'd have to be, and I think there's a lot of stuff in schools that I didn't have. I mean, they gave me a book called Spell It, and I managed mm -hmm. to find it on the internet uh, a couple of years ago. And that was my Bible. And any word that I couldn't spell, like aunts, you know, the word aunt, I, I, I didn't know where, um, or yours, or, you know, what's the word with, I don't even know it now, but Y-O-U-R, and then there's a possibly V-E. You've. You've. So spelling words like that were really difficult for me. But using this book, I could go through the book and sort of, you know, I'd not start with why. Yeah. Like, like, the worst thing people used to tell me is use a dictionary. Ah, ah. <laughs> Get your dictionary and put it where the sun don't shine. They do not help dyslexic people. I don't know how to spell the word I need to look up. I'm not looking for the meaning of the word. I'm looking at how to spell it. And because yeah. I was good at tracing, which I talked about before, I didn't finish because I forgot about it, is I used to look at the word why. And I'd write why. I'd go back and go, where am I? Why, why oh? And then oh. And then you'd go back and you'd literally the whole word, 
like um, I don't know if you noticed, but we were doing something earlier on, and um, I did the first paragraph, just like that list. I did the first paragraph, and then I had to go back and um, oh, I was doing a recording, and I was flipping between screens, and I forgot where I, I forgot where I was up to, and it's like oh, you just you know like the att attention span mm -hmm. is very small, and uh, you know like it's just I everything's patterns. And it really is, you know, like if I've got a, a PodTrack P8 recording device. Now I have to think Pod, P-O-D, and then I track. For some reason, my brain does not pick up T-R-A-K. And then I'll have to look at it again and go, is the P-A next to it hard up or separate word, you know, and, or, and then I go back and go, is it got a capital T in the middle of it? And, then, and I can't just look at that word and write it down. That will take me four looks. And then I'll look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Good, carry on, next word. And then I thought, oh, what was I writing about? I've forgotten. <laughs> so it's like, just like I did before. It's crazy. This helps. What, what is some of the misconceptions? So, for example, what are some things that people think dyslexia is and they may tell you or make allowances for you but it's actually wrong have have you encountered that yeah easy one people think um dyslexia is not being able to read and write okay that is so uh, it's so far from the truth because it's about compre we're unable to comprehend now what we're that's, getting torn. that's the key word and mm. i'm picking up and I'm I'm finding this fascinating because really? yeah I I had no I mean, idea I mean, but ten, what I am picking up ten years you just figured out I'm fascinating is <laughs> that it is the ability to comprehend, a, a coupled with the ability to stay focused. Com it's the ability to comprehend and retain the information that yeah. you're just retaining hold, hold it. it. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. So just going back a little bit. When you wrote that note that you ended up in court with, yeah, and you were probably taking a bit of time that to was, write um, out that note. That was thirty years ago, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just still trying to get my head around that. When you were writing out the note and you had finished, eventually got to the end of writing the note out. Yeah. Did you actually retain what you had written? Yeah, you know, like you would trying to find those words and, and the spelling and stuff. Yeah. Did you hold, after you'd finished the note, did you comprehend what it had actually said? Oh, I, I, I kind of did. You know, like I could literally, I wouldn't even know what it said now. I mean, I don't think it was a long note. Because, for example, I mean, you don't know, I mean, no one, I said to, the, I said to my lawyer at the time, I said, is it worth mentioning about how I'm not allowed to talk to her because I was part of a, the Jehovah's Witnesses and they kicked me out? Oh, no, the courts won't understand that. Oh, okay then. Is it worth mentioning the fact that I'm dyslexic and I can't read and write? Oh, no, that, no, you've wrote it on the paper. And I go, okay then. So what do I do from here? Oh, we go to court and you basically sit here and let the judge tell you off and you're a naughty boy. <laughs> okay, mm. okay then. And I'm, I've got no defence. And in my, with my hand on my heart, I'm thinking, oh, shit. You know, isn't it strange that a religion stops you from talking to somebody you know really well? Isn't it strange that what you write is you've just signed your death warrant? This is why I didn't say something worse. Mm. Yeah. So, and, and, and also, and, not only that, the message was out of kindness, not hate, and I'm going to kill her. So when, when these policemen knocked on my door, I didn't know what they were there for, and they said about a note, and I said, what note? <laughs> and they said that you wrote in Northlands Moor. Yeah, and I go, oh, I, oh, what did I say? So <laughs> I'm picking up a, a lot of it is comprehension and a breakdown between perhaps what you want to say and what you have said or how you oh, said it. or and, and that's what that's that's actually quite a cool thing you've just said, actually, because I'm always getting misunderstood. And you doubt yourself and what you're meaning. Because what I was meaning... I always come in peace, but shoot to kill. I don't even remember that one. <laughs> but I feel like sometimes I'm saying to people, and I go, are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, am I... Like, one thing I've learned with the speaker training that I've been doing over the years is pronunciation and comprehension. And this is why I love these YouTube videos, because I literally... I'll watch this video three times after I've done it, and I will see how I have come across, and I will be hoping 
that I've explained myself in a clear, logical manner. Mm. And by the way that I'm engaging with you, I'm thinking, did, did I get the message across? So when we have a conversation, we communicate really well together because you listen, I talk, you talk, I listen occasionally. <laughs> You know, and well, that's a conversation. But some people, when you're out in a conversation, you can sit there and they'll just offload 95% of the conversation onto you and you just listen, 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 and you get exhausted. Mm. You know, sometimes you switch off. But, I mean, it's all about learning. So what I'm trying to say is about communicating. And sometimes I connect with people and other times I don't. So then you try to find another way. Just coming back to what other people perceive dyslexia is. So, yeah, um, that I, I have heard quite common that people believe that it's an inability to read and write. Mm. Is there anything else that people, you know, will think you can or cannot do? If I'm doing forms and I'm filling out any forms, I hate forms. My partner's fantastic. She'll grab it. Jerry, do you want me to do that? And it may be as simple as put your address. Like I, where I live, I can't spell my street name. Mm. Um, you know, and I used to live in... Um, West Home Street. So I could spell West okay, but for some reason they put an L on the word home. Mm. And I'm going H O M L, or was it H O L M E? And then it looks too short. Mm. Uh, my last name used to be Danny Charlesworth. And when I was the age of 15, I changed my name to Danny De Heck um, because my stepfather's name. Uh, my name is Danny Charlesworth. I cannot spell Charlesworth. I mean, I literally cannot spell my name. Interesting. Yeah. So as a person who stutters, I know yeah. that there's a whole kaleidoscope of how people actually react to that themselves. Yeah. As in some people don't care, so they just stutter, 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 stutter through their words. Yeah. Other people are trying to hide it. Mm. Other people are, are trying to think, well, the best way to hide it is just not talk. With dyslexia... Mm. Have you ever tried to hide it? Have you, have you met anybody else who has dys dyslexia who manages it a different way to you? When you first heard me talk at Toastmasters, was it about dyslexia or did I talk about something else? Yeah, uh, I honestly couldn't tell you. But you've heard me speak enough time. I don't yeah. know whether I come across as somebody with dyslexia when I'm doing a public talk. I don't think you do. Right. Somebody saw me talk, David Clarkson, and he he saw my notes. And everyone that goes to Toastmasters goes, oh, you've got to lose your notes. I bring my notes into my speech, and I use them as part of a prompt. And I remember, I, I find that fascinating. But then what I was doing is I was printing off three or four pieces of paper, big writing, bolding all the letters that were key points, and trying to not use my notes and glance down and go, uh, arrhythmics or whatever it is and then um, you know and then I'd look at that word and I'd try to recall the words around it so I could make it into a conversation and then somebody came up to me and said David Clarkson he said why don't you use mind maps and I said what are mind maps and, he, and they changed my life so, you know yeah. so they, because I, what, I'm always because I did a lot of speaking I was disjointed weren't flowing um, so then I was using mind maps and I got more fluent in my speaking and that's something I was really uh, that was my goal and all my speaking was to be fluent I don't want to use notes but then all of a sudden when you start talking about things that you're passionate about, you become a lot better at a speaker. So that's why I like the Ponzi schemes. Because when I started doing, busting these Ponzi schemes, I didn't know much. And then I started learning all about people who were doing them, the different types of Ponzi schemes, how they all worked. This is the best example I could ever tell anybody about dyslexia. And it's like doing a jigsaw puzzle and not having the picture. Mm, and okay. and everything's just like oh where's the straight edges and you hunt through and I'm really I find all the straight edges there's 57 of them and I'll remember that number 57 for the rest of my life and then I go through and go well let's find all the green pieces put all the green pieces and then you start putting the green pieces together and they fit and you put them over here then you see sky is always blue it's at the top and then eventually the overall picture becomes very clear and that's that's what I'm like with um see the first part of this conversation I started giving that example I've forgotten what was it? <laughs> but anyway, it's a great example. <laughs> Illustration. Fantastic. And, oh, but you keep applying yourself. You may not, uh, you know, you may not have the whole picture. But if you don't go out there and do stuff and apply yourself, you won't get the benefits of it. 
So basically, I'm hearing you have this. If you have dyslexia, yeah. you accept that you have it, yeah. and you just keep applying yourself, and eventually you will learn techniques to manage it better? Use technology. Okay. That would be one of your key pieces of advice? Um, no, it'd have to be, because I still can't read and write. Um, I pick up a pen... And I barely write my name. I really do. You know, so anything, yeah, I just don't, I still don't be able to write in pen. But I can, you know, like, if I, I literally get my microphone and just hit a button, talk, yeah. boom. And people go, oh, how'd you do that? And I go, it's built into Macs. It's on my phone. It's on my iPad. It's in my car. I go, hey, Siri. Oh, hey, Siri. <laughs> I won't say what I'm going to say. But, you know, and, and, um, and I just use that technology. And I actually think I'm more productive than a lot of people. Like, I, I've written a thousand blogs. Well, actually, I lie. Actually, I haven't. I used to have a travel writer, and he used to write me blogs, and I've got them all on my website. But recently, um, you know, I've probably written, I don't know, two or three hundred blogs. But for somebody who doesn't read and write, why is Danny writing blogs? So, you know. If you were to write an email mm -hmm. for right now, how would you go about it? Uh, I'd open up the email, and I'd basically voice the whole lot into an email. Yep. And if I'm in a quiet room like I am now, I would get it pretty much pretty cool. Now with the chat, open chat AI, that's just amazing. Because I can tell it to rewrite that message with uh, more happiness, sound more serious, uh, be more pacific. I can, I can write with emotions, be sad, be happy, whatever you want it to be, and it will rewrite it. But what I find the best is just telling it to fix the grammar. Uh, and then it will go through and it will shift paragraphs to different places where I need them. And then I listen to the whole lot again. And it, I read it and I go, wow, that's exactly what I want to put. And this is people go, oh, I'm freaking out about AI. Well, this part of the AI I'm really enjoying because I'm actually be able to express myself in the way I want. I want to sound professional. I want to have, I don't want to have spelling mistakes. Hmm. Uh, a friend of mine came in and wanted a character reference the other day. I haven't done one for him for 10 years. Uh, he, he gave it to me in a PDF. Um, I managed to take a photo of it, highlight the text, chuck all the text into um, into notes, and then chucked it into... I said, what other things do you want added? Put a few bullet points up, it, chucked it into chat, API, whatever, to, and tell it to rewrite it, check the spelling and grammar. Come out as a brand new... Um, um, what do they call it? Uh, referral thing. Uh, character reference. Character reference. Yeah. And I thought, great. And and he's going, he's not using that technology. I'm like, How can you not use this technology? He's never seen it before. So essentially you would use the dictation to create the draft. Yes. You would copy and paste the draft out of the email, put it into chat GPT and ask it to basically check it or change it however you want and then copy and paste it out of chat GPT and put it back in the email and send it off. Yep. So that would achieve your purpose probably superior to most people would just, yeah, even if they had great grammatical skills, who'd be able to uh, send an email. Yep. There's one, one other thing that's quite interesting. I use shortcut keys. So, for example, I do drop shipping and mm -hmm. we get – Text from people. Oops, hold it. We get um, texts from people asking us how long shipping takes. So I, I type into my phone, how, and then the capital L, and I've got a preset message answering that question. If people say, where do you live? I type in my phone, address C for, no, B for business, and H for home, and it will type out my address. So anytime I write something, I think I'm going to write this paragraph again in the next six months, in my head, I remember all these shortcut keys, and it's just been great. So um, e everything. Um, so I get a lot of spam from people and ask people if I need SEO help. So I've got, I've written up a whole nice reply to anyone that keeps asking for SEO, and I go, why don't you buy me a cup of coffee and we'll have a chat about it? <laughs> and then I send this back every time. So I get 10 emails a day, literally, from SEO companies, and all of them I write back going, sounds great, let's do it. Let's buy me a cup of coffee and we'll chat. Never hear from them again. It's great. But it takes me four four keystrokes. Boom, boom. Yep. 
And I think that's that's using it. Fantastic. So, have have it's, you um, actually met many other people who have dyslexia? Have have dys dyslexia? I was um uh, Richard Branson. <laughs> um, he's he's got dyslexia. Have have you met? Oh, Richard I wasn't too. He hasn't he hasn't met me. Yeah, yes, no, Richard. No, not Richard, if you're watching, hey, by the way, I just want to say it's happy birthday to Pixel. Pixel. Happy birthday. Has been on my videos since day one, and he's one years old today. Isn't that nice? Um, no, I haven't really. I feel sorry for a lot of dyslexic people because at the age of twenty three, I was doomed to be a house painter. I was a painter for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I love being a painter. I was good with my hands. I, I was very good at wallpaper and all the things, paint techniques. I was good with colours. And uh, we, we worked for the richest people in New Zealand. We did five, uh, there's five, we did, I think we did five of their houses. And um, they trusted us and it was great. Um, and we managed to get right up to the top in this painting and decorating game. But I th and then somebody said to me, because I was working for a boss, and Michael, his name was, he said to me, he said, hey, have you ever thought about working for yourself? No, nah, mate. I couldn't do the accounts. I couldn't do the book work. I couldn't, I couldn't work for myself. And he said, well, I'll do that part of the business. And you can quote the jobs. Uh, you can do all the processes that we must do. And I'll listen to your opinion. I'll write out the quotes. You tell me how many hours it will take. And he worked out everything. And honestly, um, we worked together for three years. And um, it was fantastic business. And so what... What I realised from that day forward is if you can't do someone, something, then you find somebody to do what you can't do. Uh, you don't do your own accounts. So for years, I haven't now, but I did have a bookkeeper for 20 years and I've always had accountants. Uh, anything I can't do, like my branding, my logo design. Um, uh, for example, when I was doing my travel and tourism website, somebody would pay us $5,000 to do their website. I would dedicate $1,000 to get some articles written on my website. And I just yeah, broke whatever money we got into going back into the business and spread that money around to get people to do things I were good at. Right. It's yeah. Essentially expanding on the philosophy that you had earl earlier on to concentrate on your strengths. Yes. Yes. And once I learned that, boom. Concentrate on what you can do and not what you can't. Of course. And it's yeah. so simple, but I don't think many people do do that. Now... Would you be able to spot a person who had dyslexia? If you walked into a room, would you be able to spot a person? Uh, no, but I, I work um, in retail one or two days a week. And people, I, a lot of tradies come in. Mm -hmm. And I can tell by the, you know, some of the questions I ask them that they, they just, um, like if they, if, if I ever go into a conversation with a tradie, often they think they can't, they couldn't do anything clever. Hmm. But um, there's some pretty clever sparkies around and, you know, you know, some clever people around who are tradespeople. Um, but they probably, like me, I could have been still painting and decorating and smelling turps at lunchtime, you know. And it, I'm so glad I got out of that. You know. Yeah. Okay. You know. I, th I think that would be quite important that some people who have a disability, a lot of them are unseen, but the person still thinks that possibly other people can see it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I th yes, that's true. I think people might think, and they don't talk about it. Some, I don't think I would have ever talked about it. Um, but because I've had lots of, you know, weird things happen in my life, I'm fearless now. And I don't, I tell, I'm very transparent and I'm quite proud of the fact that I've overcome a lot of the obstacles. You know. So you do talk about dyslexia. You, you know, like you're quite open with the fact that you are. Yeah. Is that part of your strategy, or is that just your personality, or you don't care? Or well, it is funny that somebody with dyslexia and somebody who stutters have a burning desire to be public speakers, <laughs> because it's the wrong industry, isn't it? But why do you? What you know, like you said earlier on, you were talking about um, you. You want to be a because you can't always get your words right, you want to be perfect at it. Uh, you know, you want to be a good speaker. Oh, I think when you were talking before about being a perfectionist doing things, I think mm. I used to refer to myself as a perfectionist as if that was a good thing. Yeah. And I think, I think as I get older, I realise being a perfectionist is not necessarily a positive trait because uh, it's a... A massively self-judging trait. What about um, the other one that comes with it? 
and that is procrastination. I know you have that problem as well. Mm -hmm. I look for excuses not to do things, or I leave things to the last. I'm always late. You're always late. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You actually quite. You've come around here a couple of nights recently, and um, you've always oh, been around oh, here. And, he's about to tell me off. No, no. Well, I haven't noticed what time, but you actually normally you were shocking, but you actually turned up pretty I'm, good. Now. I'm not too bad. I've yeah, yeah, I've it. got better. Yeah, I haven't yeah. cured. Myself, Maybe that, that's but... just a really good point. We're always striving to be better versions of ourselves. I say that in my speech. You know, I think everybody should not be satisfied of where they're at. I mean, do you really want to be on the roller coaster of life? Go to school, get a job, get married, have three kids, and then grow old and um, retire, and then start travelling. Well, how how about I ask you the question? If there is somebody out there who, who maybe is in their teens mm -hmm. and maybe is at high school or contemplating going to university or contemplating starting a career, what advice would you tell them if they had dyslexia? Do they want to be entrepreneurial or do they want to just get a job? How, amb how ambitious are they? We all want lovely things, but do we really? I believe that my my biggest gift ever is my entrepreneurship. Not the fact that I've got dyslexia, but the fact that I'm always looking for side hustles. And I think that's fun. I, I reckon I could turn anything into a business. And because of my dyslexia, I look at it differently. And I challenge, uh, you know, I think, well, why don't we do it this way? Or, you know, like I have this theory that no one reads anyway. So when I, I've developed a website for a guy recently and I put all this text in from OpenAI to F Fuller's in his website. And he says, oh, I don't like open AI. People will know that I'm, you know, my clientele will know it's, you know, OpenAI. And I said, no, these are just Fuller words because you can't vision how much content I need. I need 350 words here. I need another 200 down here. And then I need an About Us page with 450 words in it. And if I ask you to write an About Us page, even though you can read and write, it will come back with this dribbly wee text. That's all I need to say about myself. And I go, but I need to, you know, I need to get it out there to the search engine. So I need more content. So I, I will use the AI technology to write the whole website out. Today, all I said is, this guy is a fitness instructor who wants to encourage people over 50 to get healthy. Please write me a homepage for his website. He's going to provide services um, so, you know, then when I wrote the services page, I did that first. Said, Please write me some services that somebody who's starting up a fitness and a mindset coaching business would have, and I come up with five services. Then I got those five services, and said, write me a three hundred word description on each of the services. Boom, boom, boom. And then I put it all there. His website looks beautiful, and he was going, "Oh, I can't have that. It's still there today." So <laughs> I'm here. I'm hearing that. Uh, with technology, particularly artificial intelligence, it is actually removing any limitations that struggles reading and writing may have given you. Yeah, you know, like you are able, I've got my able legs to back. overcome them. Yeah. You've got your legs back, and also that entrepreneurial uh, spirit there. Yeah, you know, like you can use that if you've got dyslexia. You know. Press on. There's no real need to give yourself an excuse. Yep, true, true man. And I, I, I know I'm going on about AI, but I don't just use AI. People go, "Oh, it's not correct," and I go, "Well, then tell it more precisely what you want it to say." So we had calculators when we were at school, and people were going, "Oh, if the kids need to learn their times table, seven times seven is forty-nine." Did you know it or did you memorize it? Oh, well, I I would have memorized it. Okay, then. Nine nines? 81. Yeah. I memorized all of them. And I can remember most of them. Try, give me, give me, give me, give me. 12 times 14. Ooh, I'd go 114, 144 plus 24. So that's 148, 168. Very good. Yeah, that's how my brain works. Mm. And if, I, if I'm if i trying to do, uh, you know, if it's something like... Um, 16 times 300, mm -hmm. I'll remove the zeros. And come up with 48 plus a zero. Yeah. And that's how I, well, I do it on paper more than whatever. Mm. But the, yeah, so um, I don't know how I got to that conversation. But what, what I'm saying is I don't use AI to do my work. I don't use AI to be creative. I, 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 we've done this podcast. 
So I will put it in a program that's called Descript. It will give me all the words that were spoken. The one I just did previously, I broke that into five sections. And then I asked it to give me all the timestamps for each section. And then I said, now summarize the entire podcast into a a description for a YouTube video. And then it gives me that description. And I read through it, listen to it. It's great. I'm happy with it. I'll put my name to it. And then I publish it. And it's mine. Is it? Yeah. Well, essentially, you're using software to fill in the gaps, if there are any gaps, of your own learning or or education. Yep. And you're getting a result. I can move forward. Yeah. And it's not holding me back. And I think that honesty is really something that everything, everything slows me down. You know, I can bang out some amazing stuff using the technology. I use voice. Why do people on my phone, if I want to send you a text, I'll, I'll go, hey, Rob, I, will, uh, I, use, I do maybe two or 300 messages on Telegram a day. And they, I voice them. What I find I do is use voice recordings. And I voice record a message to somebody, send it off to them, and then they have been texting me for the last two days, three days, and then I start using voice recording. Just about guarantee, 60% of the time, they will start doing voice recordings back to me because they think that's how I want to communicate. That is fascinating. And I go, I don't want your voice recordings. I just, easier speaking and saying my words than spending five minutes writing this, putting it into chat API, then pasting it back, listening to it, and then sending it. I might as well just push the button and, and you know, and say the message to a voice clip. But you've given yourself permission to communicate the way you want to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite cool. Hmm. Um, I think we've come to the end of the questions. So if you have any final statements or closing remarks. Uh, I, did a, I did do a video, which I should really tag on to the end of this. I might drop this in. Uh, and I, uh, the video that I'll probably drop in at the end of this was recorded by a friend of mine. And I wanted to be a public speaker and do a roadshow teaching schools about how to, you know, basically live life living with dyslexia. And um, I, I remember having dinner with a lady who was the headmaster of a school that had two and a half thousand uh, pupils. I think it was the second biggest or maybe the biggest school mm-hmm. was Rangiora High. And I, um, she, was, she was saying something about education. And I said, I hate education. School <laughs> never did anything for me. Never learned anything, left at school, to, um, school at 14. And then I said, what do you do? She goes, I'm the headmaster for Rangiora High. <laughs> 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 but then I thought, oh, well, I would like to be a public speaker like Nigel Letters. I like his approach and the way he speaks to children. I want to be that guy. But you, you don't want a dyslexic person who says he left school at 14 to stand up on, on a stage but I reckon I could. Anyway, what I'm saying is I, I've been practicing for five years on how to become a public speaker to do a talk about dyslexia. And then I went to some science. I, I've been, I've spoke quite a few times and I've spoke up to a, pe- a room full of 90 people about dyslexia and I've had some good experiences. One day I sat down to do a recording for my business networking company and while I was mic'd up, I said to the guy, oh, can I, I've got a speech I'm going to do at Toastmasters. And I, I just pulled out this piece of paper, read it off, and it probably summarizes the three minutes and 42 minute, uh, 42 second video summarize what it's like living as dyslexia. And I'll put that on probably at the end of this video about now. Uh, so have a listen to that. It was recorded about three or four years ago. I even paid $500 to have it promoted. And I got 75,000 views. Oh, wow. And I, that was on Facebook. I've tried paying, I haven't done had that much success before, but that's how passionate I were about getting my message out. Not that anyone seems to really care, but it, it is my story and it's the way I live and I'm proud of who I am and what I've done. I, I, you know, I think it's good. I've had some fun with it. And also, it gets you out of the shit. If you, if you write a note, you can say you've got dyslexia, but it didn't work. But um, as a rule, you can um, use it, you can always excuse it. Well, I mean, if I wrote an email to you, and I said, I, I cannot make it um, to do something. The word cannot, I miss out the, the small words. 
Right. And missing out not when you're meant oh, to... Oh, so I can. Yeah, <laughs> yes, like I cannot, you know, and then, you know, the words like, um, just the little wee tiny words I often miss out because when I'm writing, my brain's faster than I'm writing. What I think I'm writing isn't coming out on the words. Yeah. So I that's why that. I select them all and listen to it and I go, oh, yeah, that's what I have to listen to it. Go, yep, that makes sense. You know, and that's how I get by. But yeah, so that's quite fun. But it's all not bad. I've got a lovely dog. He's dyslexic. Ain't you, Pix? <laughs> Pix was tired. He's been at um, daycare for five or six hours and he needs to go to bed. He's trying to cover his eyes. Look, he's under my arm. <laughs> all right, that's cool. That's it. So um, how do we finish this one off? Thank you very much. I, I've gained some insights. I, I'm still probably going to need to get my head around, but I, I will be paying attention you know, like next time I, I probably see you communicate yep. or, or other people I, I, I communicate who could be dyslexic. And I'd like to do one with you to learn more about how you've lived with uh, being a stutterer um, because I've, I know you and you know the, it's just a really interesting story. And I think I said this in our last video, but I first met Rob giving a speech at Rotary because I used to be a Rotarian. And I thought, who is this guy? And here's this guy, very good at speaking. I'm listening to him thinking, wow, I want to be able to speak like that. And he uses his arm, he uses the whole stage, <laughs> and he, he talks with voice and vigor and vim. And then he says, I, I'm a stutterer. And I go, well, you're not stuttering now. So if you want to figure out how a stutterer can be a public speaker... Um, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll interview Rob in the not too distant future stay tuned yeah alright that's us ok and enjoy watching the video uh, I don't know what the name of this Living with Dyslexia by Danny DeHeck uh, enjoy and uh, we'll see you on the other side bye bye for now say bye Pickville woof woof yep that's you so, so when you hear the word dyslexia what do you think of? People not being able to read and write properly, maybe spelling words back to front. Well, hopefully you don't think people who can't spell are stupid. But I, I grew up thinking I was stupid going through the school system. However, when I got older, I had great joy in realising that there was a, a lot of people who had dyslexia that were also very clever, such as John Lennon, Nigel Kennedy, Walt Disney, Tommy Hilfiger, Einstein, Richard Branson, just to name a few. So I'm not here today to convince you I'm not stupid. I just wanted to give people a little bit more insight into what dyslexia actually is. So I'm 50 at the moment, and would you believe I don't actually know the alphabet? I don't know the uh, difference between a verb and a noun, and I don't even know the months of the year. So to give you an example of how that actually, what that means, if you said to me you were going away on a holiday on, in June, I wouldn't know how far away that was and wouldn't be able to gauge that distance. Uh, so if you told me that June is the sixth month of the year, then I'd be able to know that we're currently in the third month and there's a distance of three months and I'd break that down. So everything I have to translate it to understand. So it's always a battle. But fortunately enough, I do know the days of the week and you might think that's good. But... Today, I do not know how to spell Wednesday or Saturday uh, with confidence. And I use a keyboard, I can do it, but when it comes to writing it down with pen and paper, I, you wouldn't be able to read my writing. So at the age of 23, I decided to go get some professional help. I went along to Spelt Canterbury, and they did a whole lot of tests over a couple of hours, and they come back to me and they said, hey Danny, you have a reading age of a 9.3-year-old. I thought that was quite good at the time. And I said, well, what do you do about this? And they said, what you could do, you could hire a personal teacher and maybe learn how to read and write. So I did that for a year, two times a week. I would go along to my reading and writing teacher, and over a 12-month period, with my hand on my heart, I can actually say I learned nothing. It was a total waste of time. It wasn't until 1993 when an ex-employer gave me a parting gift and he gave me a digital diary. And with this digital diary, I finally found a way to remember and retain information I had learned. And I could put everyone's phone numbers and all their details in this device. So as technology has evolved, I really have embraced technology. And this four-minute speech that I've got here, when I, I wrote this yesterday, 
I used voice recognition software and spoke the words to the computer. And this speech, I've actually given this quite a few times, and I can actually save it forever. It's better than the human memory, to be honest. So dyslexia is often talked about as a gift. And I think the real difference I've found is people with dyslexia have to find new inventive ways to do things. So the purpose of this little wee video was actually to challenge you as the educated person to stop using your educated habits and find new ways to do things. And if you need a hand, you can ask Danny to hit because I'm quite clever at that stuff. <laughs>